This is Patrick at Digital Vision again with some more tutorials on Phoenix and Nikoda. Uh, today we're going to have a look at the Memories uh, screen. Now Memories is probably the last um, important part of, of the GUI that we're going to have a, an, an in-depth look at. And if you're in a single screen workstation, you will find it the Mems button right next to Library. And if, if you press it, you'll see that you turn Memories on and off. Uh, if you press Library, you will switch between Library and the selected memory setting. So Mems on or off, Library and Mems. You would see we have material on the timeline this time. We've got um, a long clip which has been uh, subclipped. Uh, we've seen the text of that. And although we haven't covered that yet, this is just to show you exactly what we do in memories and what they actually are about. So I'm going to turn on the memory screen and I'm going to go to my viewer and I'm going to press F so we can fit the, the video in there. And what you're looking at on the right hand side is a very important part of working with Nucoda or Phoenix. This allows you to easily navigate and recall and compare. So at the moment, what you're looking at on the on the right hand side here, at the top, we've got eight quick notes. So these are notes that we can save very easily. I'm just going to uh, do a quick save of a few notes and you can see that they appear in the quick notes. Now these are notes that are available um, at a moment's notice. I can just press a uh, one button and I can recall those notes from my panels. Down below here we have uh, a space which is currently filled with what is called the event view. The event view is a thumbnail representation of every single event that I have on my timeline. Selecting an event by clicking on it will add a small yellow block and we also have a blue one. The blue one simply indicates the current event and the yellow one would indicate the other selected event. Now if I go and move and click on that and put that two shots behind, it will always remain two shots behind. If I do it in front or ahead, it will do the same thing. So this is important for me because this allows me to choose a, a shot that I can easily recall from, recall grades or compare grades. I can also double click to recall grades and the event view also allows me to easily uh, locate to a particular shot as well so for example i've just hit control f5 and i can very easily go to a particular shot there are also dedicated keys for queuing two shots on the tangent as well as the precision panel Using the events view, I can also update the thumbnails of the clips that I have. So I've selected a clip, I've pressed G, that would uh, center the clip on my timeline. And I'm going to press the full stop key and that will update the thumbnail in the events view for me. Where these thumbnails are taken from is a preference that you can set in the preferences. So first frame, last frame, or time code frame. In other words, that is the frame uh, where you had last made a modification to that shot. So in this case, it would automatically jump to the shot over here. Using the controls in the top right hand corner, I can zoom in or out on the events view. I can also turn the details on and off as well as hide the quick notes. Below that, you will see that we have another effects tree. This effects tree is a mirror of the one at the bottom left hand side of the screen and they will contain all the effects and grades of the selected clip in the event. Down here we have tools for resetting the selection because I am able to go and select exactly what I would like to recall. I have a setting for restoring keyframes. I then have a recall button and an append button which we will look at later. I've also got buttons here that has to do with group grading as well as multi-track grading, which is uh, for stereo. 
I can switch between shot, which is what I'm in now, and currently event view, and notes. So these are particular notes that I would save. So in my notes view, I can save a note there. I could save another note here. So these are particular uh, notes that are being saved, uh, presets. Now, the thumbnails that are saved with these are full resolution because they allow us to make comparisons which I'll show you uh, a little bit later. Down here in the notes view, we also have a properties and a delete button. So we can go and look at the properties of a particular note, uh, adding a description. If we hover over a note, we will get information on the note itself. The snapshot button will export the current image that you're looking at as a still frame, and that will get exported to the folder that is set in the general preferences. Uh, there is also a preference for that, and you can choose whether you want to export these stills as JPEG, PNG, DPX, or, or whatever format you want. The snapshots are named automatically based on settings that you have made in the preferences. We will automatically generate a folder based on the project, as well as the composition that the snapshots were taken from. They will have time code and multiple shots can be taken of the same image. At this point, I'm going to move away from notes mode and back into shot mode. And we can look at the other views that are available. So to recap what we've already done. Firstly, the event view is going to show us a picture of every event on the timeline. The track view will show us an image for every track. So if I add a new track over here, you're going to see the same picture because there's only one track and it's actually looking from the top down, it's seeing the same track. If I had to go into my segment mode and just for now move two clips and put them on this track here, you would see that that thumbnail would update. And it allows me to go and if I go into my compare mode, currently the comparison would be video two with video two. But if I select video one, it will now compare video two with video one. Now this compare mode will follow through. So if I move back to event view, I can choose a different event for it to compare with. If I move to head view, currently, I've only got, I've got four playheads, but I only have three of them, uh, or one of them assigned. If I go and put head playhead B over here, you'll see that that will update. And that we have now a choice between comparing with A or B. So I'm now comparing A and B or C or D if I had more than one playhead. The revert is a comparison with the reverted state of a shot. If I land on a shot and I color grade it, the revert would be the state that it was on, that it was in when I landed on the shot itself. Source, very obvious. If I had gone to add some more saturation on the one side, the source, which is probably the most commonly used comparison, will allow us to do a comparison with the source, the original image. Input effects will allow us to compare the current source to what has been added to the input effects on the system. Base will compare it to the base grade. And groups is another view uh, which allows me to do group grading, but will also allow me to uh, compare or uh, copy grades. So as you can see, the memories view is pivotal in the use of Nucoda. It is where I choose my comparisons. It is where I choose my grades. It is where I copy my grades from. It is where I recall uh, uh, my grades from other shots. So it's a very, very important part of, of working in uh, Nucoda or indeed in, uh, in Phoenix because I can set up presets. I have a folder here 
and this little folder if I'm in notes view will expose all my notes to me so I can be uh, in different projects I can drag and drop notes uh, I can make new folders over here and another important part of this is if I'm in event mode if I had more than one composition I would be able to go and select the composition over here a different composition to actually recall notes from and on this side I can always choose how I would like to sort my material so if I do have a source time code and the type I can go and click on that and that will resort my material in the events view only not on the timeline but it will resort my material to type and source time code so I'm going to put that back to event time code uh, we have got a button here to stop the events view scrolling uh, which is sometimes uh, sometimes handy and we also have an option here to lock the selected event um, that is something that you might want to do every now and then if you uh, if you're working uh, with something where you have got um, multiple shots that you want to recall from one particular shot so you can put that there and lock it and uh, even if you go to another shot so if we go to the timeline it will remain always remain on shot number four so in this case it's a lot easier to um, to recall from that particular shot so that is the importance of the memories view so if you hear about mems or memories then this is what we're talking about um, we hope that you found the video informative and uh, we look forward to uh, to the next one